Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be talking about, uh, well, I talked a few days ago about how to reset your brain if you have too many tech, if you have, you're spending too many hours in front of the computer or your phone or whatnot or those video games. And so I'm going to talk about some of the things that you as a parent can do not only to help reset the brain, but to different activities that you can have your kids be involved with instead of constantly on their phones or constantly in a video game. So let's go through a few things. Um, first of all, music lessons. Get them involved in music lessons. I already told you about all the things about music. I'm not going to go into it. But getting them involved in music lessons is an important thing. In my book, I have a whole section on how to choose an instrument, a teacher, and how to get kids to practice. The other thing is board games. Once a week as a family, we played board games. We brought out every type of board game imaginable. Now my youngest son was the one that there were video games now available, but we really curtailed how much time that he spent on that. And we spent a lot of times doing board games and all of our kids, even today, they love doing board games. What does a child learn? Well, they learn how to give and take, they learn how to win and lose, and they learn how to play uh, with other kids. And that, is, that helps them with their socialization skills. Amongst uh, other things, they're certainly uh, learning about spatial awareness, uh, detecting patterns, all of those different things. In fact, I gave an entire um, tidbit as well that talked about all the different types of board games and what it will do for their brains. Another thing is dancing and sports and any kind of movement. And movement actually uh, builds up stronger neural connections in the brain, which means it makes you smarter. So if you get your kids involved in any kind of dance, it's wonderful. Any kind of sports, it's wonderful. Those are things where they're moving. And I remember I told you Carla Hannaford's book, um, Smart Move. She says that movement is an indispensable part of learning. Now, if you have a child who doesn't like uh, group sports, hey, Understandable. I had one of my sons who just simply didn't like all, you know, all the arms and the legs, all that movement. It was difficult. So we got him into solo sports, or pretty much solo sports, uh, golfing, tennis, and also swimming. Okay, so even if they get into like water polo, most of the action is underneath the water, all those legs kicking and everything else. Yeah, there's that ball going, but there seems to be less action for kids that don't like group sports where there's so many arms and legs and so much action. They seem to do well like in water polo. Anything where they are moving is extraordinarily important and extraordinarily helpful. The other thing is art and drawing and creating and doodling. Um, there's a really fun book out, Totally Tangled. This one is, these are, you're making these tangles and they're really fun. You do them in black and white. You can get all the supplies now at Michael's. They have all the supplies for this. And this is a really fun book to look at and all the different ways that you can doodle. It's basically doodle. Remember, you probably, I don't know if you were, you were raised by a parent who said, stop, stop doodling and do something. Well, actually doodling, they now know is, is really important. It helps with the brain. It helps with brain activity. It helps with creativity and all of those good things that we want for our kids. Another thing is coloring. All these coloring books that have become so popular and the gel pens, it's something that um, you can play music in the background to your kids while they're sitting there and they're coloring. When you get in, in a child involved with art, put a big piece of butcher paper up on, the, um, on one of the walls and have your child draw in a vertical position. This helps with what is called midline, crisis, cr uh, midline crossing, which helps them with brain dominance, okay? Usually on brain dominance, you want everything on one side, they, their right hand, right foot, right eye, right ear, right everything. Um, and, and so this will help with midline crossing. It also helps with hand-eye coordination, spatial awareness, and creativity. So if, if you want to do paint, I would do it outside. You can put it up on a wall next to your house. You can put some butcher paper or an old sheet or what underneath it and let the kids paint to their heart's content. Another fun thing is on a hot summer day, put a bucket filled with water, give them a paintbrush and let them paint uh, different things in, you know, um, in the uh, driveway of your home. So art, coloring, doodling, all of those things are important. Another thing, of course, is books and reading. Get your kids involved in reading and in books. And uh, during the summer, get them involved with the library reading program that they sign up for. Definitely read to your children every day. I've talked a lot about this. I don't want to go into a lot of detail. 
Another thing is playing with friends. Okay, if they're playing a video game, they have one friend there, they don't do any kind of interaction except the dumb video game. So have their friends come over. It's so important to build up those friendship relationships, especially to have friends from the same school that they go to so that they can build up those relationships so when they go to school they have somebody there that they, they know they're friends with and they're familiar with. So have opportunities where they come over to the house to play and make it like, guess what guys, you're not going to be doing any video games. You're actually going to play with each, play and do different other types of games, ride your bike, run around outside, anything but the video games. And last, give your kids chores. Kids need to learn responsibility. They need to learn that everybody helps in the house. Everybody messes up the house and everybody has to help clean the house. Everybody should have some type of chore. If you have a, an animal in the house, by all means, make them part of taking care of that animal. It helps kids in so many ways. It teaches them how to work too, which is um, definitely an asset. So let me leave you with this bonus tip. A super, super fun game is sports stacking cups. And this has become a phenomena in the United States. They have all of these tournaments now that your kids can get involved with. It's, um, they're stacking these cups into a pyramid and they're taking them down. If you go on my website, and, and I'll give you a, a link at the bottom, you can actually click on it and it will give you some of the um, YouTube videos that are out there on these tournaments and these kids doing these sports stacking cups. We got a, a set for our, uh, some of our grandkids. They loved them. They are fun, they're interactive, it's a learning tool, hand-eye coordination, many, many benefits for these, and your kids will love them. In fact, I think they will, honestly, if you introduce them to them at a fairly early age, I think they'll like them better than, than video games. Uh, and they're a fun, interactive tool. Thank you for joining me. If you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please press the button below here. And also another little bell will come up and you can press that and it will uh, send you a notification each time I post a new YouTube. Appreciate you joining me, appreciate your support, and I'll see you tomorrow.